Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets, back with another video tutorial on C++ programming. So in this video tutorial, we'll be covering up the topic of function templates. And we'll also see what template programming is and what is generic programming. So in the previous video tutorial, we talked about operator overloading and we basically saw two different programs on operator overloading and two different video tutorials. So if you have missed that video tutorial, you can check it out in this playlist itself. And you can also see a card on the top right corner. And also if you are new on this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of information technology and computer computer science oriented video tutorials on this channel and a lot are going to be coming soon so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video so make sure you turn on the notifications as well okay so with that being said let's get started with today's topic so first we'll go about a little bit of theory about what templates are in C++ programming and make sure you watch this video to the end of this video because in the end we'll also see a programming practical part wherein we'll actually go ahead and code a template program so both theory as well as the practical part will be very clear to you so let's first go ahead with the theory so what exactly is a template in C++ now templates are simple yet very powerful tools in C++ and basically what they do is they help us in generic programming so you can see in the point number two over here templates are the foundation of generic programming so what exactly generic programming is is it involves writing code in a way that is independent of any particular type and by type I mean the data type so you will get a very clear idea when we actually see a program as well right now just let's go through the theory so a template is a blueprint or a formula for creating a generic class or a function. So there are two different types of templates in C++ programming. The first one is function template and the second one is class template. And in this video tutorial, we'll be just focusing on function template and we'll also see a program. And probably in the consecutive or the next video tutorial, we'll go ahead with the class template. Okay, so let's see what function template is in detail. Now function templates are special functions that can operate with generic types. Now generic type as we just saw are the type which do not have a predefined data type. Now this allows us to create a function template whose functionality can be adapted to more than one type or class without repeating the entire code for each type. Now what exactly does this mean is that the simple idea is to pass data type as a parameter. Just as we pass variables as parameters, we can pass data type as parameters so that we don't need to write the same code for different data types. And this essentially gives us the polymorphic kind of functionality and we've already discussed extensively what polymorphism is and we've seen the different types that is function overloading, operator overloading, function overriding in this entire playlist. So if you want you can check those videos as well. So coming back to function templates now we write a generic function that can be used for different data types. So what exactly does this look in terms of programming aspect? Let's take an example. So here you can see I have compared function overloading versus function template. So on the left hand side LHS we have function overloading in the orange and here in the blue we have function templates. So in function overloading we, you already know that we have to type or write three different types of functions with the same name if we are going to pass different data types. So you can see in this first add function we have to integer variables. In the second one we have float variables in the third one you have double variables. So depending upon the number of or the type of variables that we pass the appropriate function is going to be called. But here the function is overloaded because we are using the same function name just that the type of variables being passed are different. But again you can see that we have to write the function for the three different types. So what function template does is it overcomes this redundancy that we don't have to type it three different times. So let's take a view on function template and this syntax must be new but then I'll also show you a program. So here's how it looks. You have to write down template. So this is a key word then you have to open and close angular brackets and then again you have to type this word type name this is again a keyword and then a placeholder that is going to take the value of the data type so this t corresponds to a generic data type so you can see i have created the function as follows t space add then in the brackets again tx and ty so this purple color t is the data type that is going to be passed in the main function so inside this again we have performed the addition and i have not written the body but we'll see that in the program and in the main function you can see while calling calling add in the angular brackets I'm passing the data type. So this int in purple is going to take place at this place. So this t is going to be replaced by integer. So int add int x and int y. So this function is replicated over here. Now for the second time I'm passing float in the angular brackets. So all the t's are going to be reply, uh, replaced by float. So this function is going to be replicated and then lastly we have double. So this function is going to be replicated. Now the advantage here is I just wrote this function only one time rather than writing it three different times for different data types. So this is one feature which gives us more flexibility and reduces the code to a much extent. Say for example we have 10 different function overloaded cases wherein we have to say use the same name then you can use a template and you have to just write it once rather than overloading it 10 different times. Okay so this was just a theoretical aspect and a little bit of example. Let's move on to the programming part and let's see how it actually looks like. Okay so quickly open up your day C++ ID and you can see a program that I've already typed in so what you can do is you can pause this 
this screen and just type it out along with me and I would recommend that you type out the entire program so that it will give you the best practice. So here you can see in this part I have performed function overloading so I have overloaded the add function three different times like just what we saw in the PPT. So for integer I have different function for float I have different and for the double one I have different. So in the main function what I can do is I can say C out addition of two integers 3 and 4 is and then I can say add what I can do is I can pass 3 comma 4 okay if I save this this overloaded function is going to be called so if I go and say execute compile and run you can see I got the output addition of two integers is 3 and 4 now this was the case when we were performing function overloading so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this entire part because we're, we're not dealing with function overloading in this entire program or in entire tutorial we are more concerned with function template so let's try to create a template so what I'll do is I'll just comment this part out and here below we'll create a function template for add a function. So here's how the syntax goes. You have to first write down template. So this is a keyword in the angular brackets. You have to say type name. This is another keyword and this is supposed to be as it is. You can have a space between them and it doesn't matter if you have a space or not. And then you have to create a placeholder. So I'll say type name T. Now below that, let's try to create that function. I'll say T add inside this. I'll say TX comma TY. Then in the function, I will say return x plus y. So x and y are the parameters being passed and their data type is this placeholder t and the return type is also t. So this t will be resolved when we actually go ahead in the int main function and call it. So here what we'll say is addition of two int integers three and four and just add one more piece of code over here. So we'll just add angular brackets and inside this we'll pass int. So when calling a function template type of function, we have to include this extra bit of information. And this is essentially what the type t is going to be so when i say int this t automatically becomes int this t becomes int and the data type of the parameters also become int so let's save this and let's try to compile and run this and there you go you can see addition of two integers is three and four so by default this function worked perfectly we did not get any errors which means that the function template was successfully created and it ran without any errors now let's try to just replicate this one more time and here what i'll do is addition of two float variables 3.4 and 4.2 is so here what I'll do is I'll pass float let's just take this on the new line I'll say end l over here and over here as well so inside these parameters what I'm going to do as I'm going to say 3.4 f and 4.2 f just save this and if you don't know what this f is f stands for float whenever you're passing a float variable in an argument you can explicitly tell that it is a float variable otherwise i suppose it takes double value so just save this go to execute and say compile and run and there you go at the second line you can see addition of two float variables is 3.4 and 4.2 is 7.6 so the addition also is working perfectly right now let's try to again replicate this and in the next line let's try to add two double variables so i'll say 3.45 and 4.23 and in the angular brackets i'll pass the data type as double so here you can see we are passing the data type as well as an argument but it is passed in this angular brackets just erase this f 4.5 over here and 4.23 over here save this execute compile and run there you go you got the output for this as well so the advantage here is using this one single function we achieved the functionality of these three different overloaded functions so if i just erase this out we don't need this anymore we are achieving the same functionality using this small function and you just have to type it once now you must be wondering how do i pass in two different data type oriented parameters so this t is going to take integer but what if i want to pass a integer and a float variable so just put a comma over here again write type name and add a new placeholder now this does not need to have capital letters it can be anything i'm just writing it t and u you can name it anything and here inside this what i'm going to do is i'm going to say u over here and also i'm going to change the return type as u so just save this but when i'm making the function call in the main function in the angular brackets i have to again pass one more data type for the second data type over here so i'll say double over here and if i pass 3.45 the addition of 4.5 plus 3 is going to be 7.5 and since the return type is going to be double because double is the second parameter which is going to take place of u and you can see now i have changed the return type also as double so 7.5 is going to be printed so let's try to save this and let's try to run this i'll just erase these two lines 
let's try to save this and let's try to execute this okay so there you go addition of two integers is three and four okay i just didn't write the text over here i'll say addition of two variables three and four point five is just go to compile and run and there you go you can see the output addition of two variables three and four point five seven point five now notice that since the return type was double that is the reason why seven point five was printed if i would have changed this return type over here as p and if i save this and if i go and compile and run i think the program will run yeah it ran but then you can see the output of 3 plus 4.5 is 7 and the reason why it is 7 is because it is returning a integer data type and in integer data type we do not have floating point number so it truncates that 0.5 part and just 7 is printed so you just have to take care of the correct return type over here so now you can even switch between the two different types you can pass 3.5 and 4.5 you can pass any two different types and the order also can change but you just need only one template function so when the order of data type being passed as arguments in functions change in terms of function overloading you had to again overload it two different times but here we don't need to type it two different times using one single template function you can achieve that functionality so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of function templates we discussed the theory we discussed what templates are then we moved on to function templates and we also saw a programmatical example so now both theory as well as the practical part must be very clear to you if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment section and if you like this video let me know how this video was and give it a thumbs up if you really liked it also share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace